for Kevin McCarthy going after Representative Ilhan Omar. Uh, this this is uh, you know cuts right to the bone for you uh, as a as a Muslim American. Um, tell us about Kevin McCarthy's attacks on Omar, where they originated, and 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 why he's doing this, in your opinion. Right, absolutely, because Congressman Omar is she's black, she's Muslim, she's an immigrant, and she's a strong woman. And all of that rolled into one is what the MAGA base hates. And Congressman Omar, to remind people, was one of Donald Trump's favorite punching bags. In fact, at a rally despicably in 2019, his supporters chanted, send her back, as in send a black woman back to Africa because they don't like her because she dared to speak out against Donald Trump. So you've got that. Plus, before that, you had a a history for the years after 9-11, but especially from 2012 on, of anti-Muslim bigotry being weaponized in the GOP base, really bringing people out on the right to come out and say, yeah, we hate Muslims, to the point where Donald Trump took it to new lows when he called for a complete and total ban on Muslims coming to this country during the 2016 campaign. So what McCarthy, he's lived through that. He sees that. He understands a man who's really not liked by anyone. I have to be honest, not even the GOP likes him. He's a transactional. He's a lobbyist dressed up as a congressman. That's all he is. Yeah, Yeah, and they know that. But Kevin McCarthy is desperate to get the MAGA people to like him. So what is he going to do? Serve up some bigotry, some white nationalism, anti-Muslim bigotry rolled into one with Congresswoman Omar and get her off her committee. But the, the struggle for him is that it takes a full vote of the House. And I had our mutual friend, Congressman Pocan, on last night who said that he doesn't have the vote. So that's why it's kind of quiet right now, because he's learned from his own GOP caucus. There are members who are like, no, we're not going to vote to remove her from her committee. So he's struggling with trying to get the base on board with removing her to make him more popular with the broader Republican base. Which I think speaks to a larger issue here, which is that, you know, when Democrats are reaching out to their voters, they tell people what they're going to do for them, which is, you know, how government is typically envisioned by people all around the world. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to provide you with good schools. We're going to help you get to college. We're going to provide you with health care. We're going to we're going to make sure that, you know, your home isn't taken away by scam artists. We're going to control the banksters. We're we're going to, you know, regulate industry in America. We're going to make sure that the minimum wage gets raised. We're going to help you uh, have the right to unionize. When Republicans reach out to their voters, they don't tell them what they're going to do for them. I mean, the Republican voters in the United States are the most crapped upon people in the country. That You've got massive poverty across the red states. You've got the highest gun death rates in the red states. You've got, uh, you know, the, the worst, the highest levels of, of illiteracy in the red states. What the Republicans do is they go off on, on uh, we're going, you know, here's who you have to hate, right? Right, that's <laughs> and, it. And, and all they have to sell is hate because really all they want to do is give tax breaks to billionaires and help their corporate friends. How do we, how do we message that? I, you know, that's clearly the reason why McCarthy, or part of the reason why McCarthy's going after Omar. Here's the, the problem, Tom. As Democrats, we're not just fighting Republicans. We're fighting against the corporate media's dishonest me- narratives. How many times have you seen stories about GOP extremism when they both sides it? Yeah. Look, the Democrats are extremists. We want Medicare for all. We want federally funded pre-K. That's our idea of extremism. On the right, their extremism is white nationalism, it's election denialism, and it's supporting the January 6th terrorist attack, which now nearly 60% of Republicans per CBS poll view not as terrorism, but as an act defending freedom. Again, we have a fascist movement against this where, Tom, if a Democratic president did what Trump did and 60% of Democrats said that attack was defending freedom, the GOP would be calling us every name in the book and fascism will be the right name. But when the reverse happens, you don't see anyone, very few in the media besides us, perhaps, Joy Reid, my buddy, and a few others call the GOP what they are. And it's not hyperbolic. It is a white nationalist fascist movement. They've embraced violence and it is growing. And, and I, as we get to 2024, this presidential cycle, because it's going to be a competitive primary, expect Trump and DeSantis and others to spew bigotry and hate again and rile up violence to get the, ba- the base animated and violence against us, against us Democrats. That's what they're going to be doing. So hang on. It's going to be scary because Trump's back involved and it's a competitive primary. 